Hello everyone, my name is Amir Pastor. I'm a product manager of IoT and a strategist. If you're new here, this channel is all about IoT. I'm trying to cover all corners of IoT from the technical standpoint, um, hardware, software, communication, cloud system, application, security, and also the marketing side. And actually, specifically this series is designed for product managers and manufacturers to launch a successful IoT product. You know, IoT is everywhere these days. And actually, I was just reading this, uh, the report that uh, it was saying that during the pandemic, 85% um, of Americans, they bought some sort of the smart home devices, which is a big part of the IoT uh, ecosystem and markets. Um, I'm not saying maybe 85% is right or wrong, but I'm pretty sure um, these days, specifically after the pandemic, because most people are working from home or they had to work for some time from home. We cannot talk about the smart home and ignore HVAC industry. That's a big part of the um, smart home market. And so this episode that I have today is going to talk about HVAC, specifically in the oil industry. And I have a really special guest today, Fred Hunt. He's a uh, director of marketing at Beckett Corporation. Beckett is one of the leaders in the uh, burner industry, specifically in the oil industry. So um, I want to pass it to you, Fred, actually, if you can give us uh, uh, more background and introduce yourself, that would be great. Well, hey, Amir, thanks so much for having me on today. And indeed, I think that the topic that you're talking about is incredibly important and really finds itself in the far corners of every industry. And yes, today I do uh, lead the sales and marketing effort for uh, the market leader and uh, and the uh, the oil fire burner uh, industry, and so I'm really excited to talk to you today about what we're doing, and also maybe to learn a little bit more from you as well. So let's discuss about the um, oil industry. How it's working these, uh, today, actually. So uh, to me, the oil industry is everything from uh, delivering a fuel to burning a fuel uh, to having a reliable heat, and also we have a different um, targets and customers. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about the industry itself, the way that you know this industry? Well, so what I'd say is, is listen, from, from my perspective, our goal and the goal of the company is really to continue to provide um, heating comfort for uh, for the home, the end user, the homeowner, the person, the, the business. Our goal is to provide the uh, least uh, costly, most efficient way to, to make that happen. And so today we, we find ourselves and I'll certainly in the marketplace that serves somewhere around 7 million homes or so with, with, uh, with oil heat. Uh, it is um, a process that's been around for many, many years and continues to be. There are certain, certainly challenges as we look into uh, the next uh, near future. But one of the things that really um, affects our industry, and I think it affects many of the service industry, those who are actually servicing uh, our units, is that, one, you know, we have a, an aging of our workforce. So that, that workforce, that technician workforce, uh, is, is, um, is retiring. And that means that we have younger folks that are coming in. The challenge is, of course, that knowledge. How do you pass that knowledge on? One of the things that we've learned also, especially as you talked about a few moments ago with the, with the pandemic, is that it's many people are less comfortable having folks in their homes. And so we've got to find a way to, I think, marry technology to actually help our technicians as well as allow them to be more responsive to the needs of our end users, the customers, the homeowners, so that if and when there is a problem, we've connected it in a way that's meaningful, uh, that allows for quick diagnostic and analysis and turns it into a much quicker trip faster and the ability to kind of get down to what's important and then get out. Okay. Um, one one question I have for you is that because Beckett mostly is working on the uh, on the oil burners. Um, I know for a fact uh, Beckett is also working on the uh, gas side as well. But uh, th maybe that that could be an inter interesting uh, topic to cover. That uh, why people are still using um, oil. Um, let 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 me start it. Um, so I, I was checking actually there is a uh, an FPA one ten um, and basically it's mandating. Um, hospitals and locations like hospitals that um, they need to have a backup heating system um, for the 96 hours. And if you, if you look at the um, uh, recent um, issue we had with the Colonial Pipeline, um, there was a hacking in that pipeline and basically for two, three days um, we had an issue with the supply. 
Um, so, and it's kind of telling me this distributed distributed uh, heating system is gonna uh, be really critical for the security uh, of the of the heating system, uh, not just for one state. It's a uh, nationwide actually security issue, and uh, to have a more reliable um, heating system, definitely we need to have a backup like a distributed heating system. And mm -hmm. oil is a really good candidate uh, for uh, for something like this. And on top of that. Um, having something like this without monitoring it, and actually, I know for a fact there was a there was a location, there was a mainframe uh, server. It was using a uh, diesel uh, generator as a backup, uh, and basically, um, there was a massive um, power outage. Uh, for one hour, um, they were using the UPS, and basically, they switched to the generator, the diesel generator, and all of a sudden, the system stopped working, and they they lost the server. And the reason was that. Uh, someone forgot to fill up the tank, so that was a that was a um, example I know uh, for for a backup system. Uh, but maybe that would be great actually if you can add uh, add more reasons why people are still using uh, heating oil. Well, you know, I mean, you, you, you certainly struck on uh, one of the key issues um, that that surrounds. Uh, this the supply of energy, and that is indeed in fact, oftentimes there there is a need for an alternative source in case, uh, so in the case of a hospital or or in um, and maybe a, a fire station or something like that, that really you absolutely have to have service from, and when you don't have access to that based off of one source being um, uh, not being there, it becomes very very difficult and almost impossible to provide that service. So what you'll find is that uh, you know. One of, one of the things that really is, is important to note is when somebody has uh, oil heat in their home, they literally have somewhere around 275 gallons of stored energy right there on their on their property. And so that means that they're not dependent necessarily on, um, you know, being on the grid at that point because it's being supplied by them by their own system. We saw some of the uh, the, uh, the downsides of, of, of uh, uh, you know, kind of a supply system when you look at what happened down in Texas this past year as well. Uh, if without alternatives, it's sometimes tough. Now, why folks are still using it? Well, in many cases, it's just convenient. Uh, the cost makes a ton of sense, and it is something that has been a part of their their lifestyle for for their uh, for their, their adult lives and as, as they're growing up as kids as well. And and we continue to find that um, it is a preferred means of of uh, home heat for many people. Okay, fantastic. Um, and and before diving to the uh, to giving a solution to people and how they have to add IoT connecti connectivity to uh, to the HVAC systems, uh, I want to give some examples actually. Um, so th these days, all companies we know they're looking for uh, connectivity and having a connectivity in their portfolio, but not necessarily all of them will be successful in their in their jour uh, journey. And the reason is that I believe. Uh, some of these companies, they don't know what is the exact added value to their, to their customers. Let me give you an example of another industry. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the leaders in the, uh, in the garage door opener um, industry, basically they designed a connected garage door opener. And kind of they, they were successful in their, uh, in their sales, but the people, they bought that product not just because of the connectivity and opening the, the door, uh, the garage door with the, with the app, actually they bought it to monitor the teenagers, to see when they're going out, when they're uh, coming back. So that was the added value to their customers. And s same, thing, same thing for our industry. Let me give you an example um, that was my very own experience. That was 10, probably 10, 11 years ago. I used to uh, live in Binley in Akron, Ohio. And that was a large, large building. And all of a sudden that was Friday night and the flame sensor in the boiler failed. And you know, the flame sensor is there to um, check if the flame is there or not. And in the case of flame is not established, is turn off everything because of the safety of the system. And so that small um, sensor failed and the loss of heat. And basically it took three, four hours for the system to cool down and everyone to realize, yeah, there is no heat in, this, in, the, in the building. And once you're living in a large building, um, you're under the impression that yes, yeah, someone else is controlling the issue or someone else is reporting to the manager that we don't have a heat. But it took 12 hours for us to realize, yeah, no one is 
fixing the problem. So we started calling the uh, management office and the poor guy, the manager was on a vacation uh, for a day. And basically once he came back after 24 hours, he had to call the technicians, technician, he came, he came and he checked the system. Uh, he realized the problem was that, uh, was the uh, flame sensor. He didn't have a part on his truck. So he had to go to the distribution center to buy a part and come back and fix the system. It took almost two days for our system uh, to get fixed. And you know, that that's kind of um, disappointing and disaster in a large building, not having a heat during a winter time. Uh, that's kind of bad. So um, that was my example of not having a um, connectivity or not having um, the real time monitoring in something like this. But what, uh, what, what are the problems um, that in our industry, what are the problems that we cannot solve basically with the way that we are doing it today? Well, you know, I think the, the question is, how can we become a bit more effective? I think that, listen, the, the industry has been around for a long, long time, and we've had technicians who've been working these issues for a long, long time, and they really know uh, what they're doing. And as I mentioned, of course, there is this, this coming gap of folks who have, you know, some of this long served knowledge. But the, the fact of the matter is that a lot of these people know, most of these people know what, exactly what's going on. And, and uh, uh, so really the, the question for us is how do we allow ourselves, how do we get ourselves to a position where we are more able to respond and more able to quickly get answers to um, that call for heat that didn't happen, whether that be discovered to be an empty tank or perhaps something not um, working mechanically that needs to be addressed much more quickly. All of us are recognizing that there is a convergence, and a convergence of information that's going right to that handheld, that microcomputer that we all carry in our pockets or in our uh, in our purses or wherever that wherever that might be, backpacks. It doesn't really matter. But the point is, that's where it's happening. And so, as we look at training the new uh, the newer uh, technicians coming into the marketplace, as we look at making our service more convenient for our end users we find that this is the place that we have to be so that we can become more predictive. We have the opportunity with what uh, could be a nice connected system to understand enterprise-wide what's happening and understand what behaviors are going on that will allow us to know ahead of time when it's time to come in and make a shift, to make a recommendation as opposed to making a fix. Fantastic, actually. Uh, you, you mentioned a really um, important item. Um, basically, um, making it easier for technicians to diagnose the problem and basically be more predictive, um, which is really important, I believe. Um, how about the target audience here? Um, to me, this industry is not just the business to business, um, like, uh, like technicians or dealers and contractors, to me, it's also um, the customers, the homeowners as well. So if you have a, just one ecosystem, let's say we have an ecosystem of the connectivity, um, that could be a little bit challenging how we want to serve all these customers and at the same time make, make all of them happy. Um, who is the target audience here? Who, who will be the secondary target audience for our system? Well, no, I, I think that that's a really key um, component of, of the strategy that we're putting into the marketplace. Uh, what we're doing is we're not making a separate ecosystem for, uh, for, for different targets. What we're doing is we're adjusting the ecosystem to be appropriately respons responsive to the, the end user that we're targeting. So in other words, I mentioned technicians. Technicians are those who come in and fix um, issues, maybe do tune ups, that sort of thing. They work for a large organization, a larger organization that has a network of homes that are probably under their care. And if not, there are those who may be called upon. But at the end of the day, the end user, the homeowner, or the business owner who actually has you know, the need for that product, the heat that it generates, is, is another customer that's incredibly important. And so what we need to be able to do is manage the messaging, manage the information that's available to each one of those appropriate to what they need and what they want. And so the service that we're providing for, from an IoT infrastructure for the technician really benefits the, the, the person who they report, who owns the service because then they can sell that service 
more broadly to the homeowner so that they can be there ready when they're ready. And that's a big value to the homeowner. They at least want to be able to know I've got a fault. Something's not right here. And while I might not be able to repair it, I need to know that it's occurred so that I can get somebody on it relatively quickly. So I think, you know, it is, it goes across a variety of spectrums and every target is different. It all has to serve and be served by that same backbone, but we're working to make sure that those strategies all work. To make a summary of what you explain, uh, to me, for uh, uh, homeowners, basically, as you mentioned, they want to just see the fault. If the system is working fine, basically, it's just peace of mind. So um, to put, a, uh, to put, an, put in an example, uh, for the homeowners, it's like a, a check engine light in your car. Uh, they just want to make sure the system is working. And in the case there is something wrong and um, they can call the technicians to come. And also you mentioned that um, the system should be preventive. So maybe they don't need uh, they don't need to even call the technicians. The technician at the same time they see a check engine light, they will get a notification, one of your accounts has a problem so they can go and fix it for the technician side and the, um, the uh, business owners of the HVAC servicing companies. It's more like a, um, um, diagnostic tools so they can that they and that and the um, technician they connect to your car so they see all the error codes of your car so these guys they can use it to make a uh, better tuning they can make it uh, make the troubleshooting much faster easier and uh, and also at the same time they can make sure the way that they uh, do the service they don't they don't they don't get a, a lot of callbacks because they have they are offering a more reliable service so one of the items I wanna uh, I wanna talk about. You mentioned this system can be preventive, correct? So we can correct. monitor the system twenty four seven and in real time. And uh, if we have a if we, if we have a um, artificial intelligence AI running in the background, it can it can decide if something is wrong with your system. Let's let's put, uh, put uh, go back to the example I gave you at the beginning. The the building I used to live so. The impedance or the beha electrical behavior of the flame sensor is not going to change overnight or it's not going to fail overnight. Basically, there is a drift in the impedance over time. So let's say um, two weeks before the uh, total failure, if someone uh, use a meter to check the impedance of the flame sensor, they can realize the impedance, impedance is drifted. So basically something is wrong and uh, this sensor is going to fail in the future. So we can be more preventive. That's true, yeah. Exactly. So in that case, in the case that we can be more preventive, um, so the the uh, business owners, the technicians, they, they know exactly what's wrong with the system so they can go and get the part before they go to the site. And to me, um, that's going to be real helpful for them because they don't need to, um, they don't need to uh, load everything on a truck and basically they can keep the money uh, in their pocket. So do you want to add any comment on that? So the, the, the whole idea of this predictive maintenance is, you know, as you described, what I'd add to it is that there's, there's always this conversation in the trade where, where people talk about this, that midnight call for heat. We don't know what it is. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on call as a technician or I'm, you know, as a homeowner, what I don't want is the, for the middle of the night, your family to, um, to have to experience extreme cold when, when it's, you know, when in fact it may or may not be necessary, it may not have been necessary, pardon me. So if we have the ability to take all of the data that I was mentioning before, bring that together and understand how patterns start to form over time, that allows us to do just that, become incredibly predictive and know when it's time to walk in. Now, listen, by no means am I telling you that, it's, that we're ready for it to be foolproof. No way, by no means am I telling you that, um, you know, that, that the industry is there now. But I am telling you that we see this across multiple categories. And this is one of those opportunities for us to raise that capability within the HVAC and specifically the, the uh, oil crowd burner area of, of, uh, of heating as well. Uh, where is Beckett today on this journey? So we have made some in incredible strides over the past uh, year and a half or so. And one of the things I'd say is that, one, the absolute um, acknowledgement that we needed to be there, that we needed to do and take market leadership, much like um, other areas of, of, our, of our product offering, we needed to be there. But in most cases, you know, you it's... 
it's not just for the sake of putting something into an application and it not having any meaning. We have been striving very, very much so to develop a process that allows um, us to, to actually pro to provide a service that is meaningful. So we have an application. We have um, and are continuing to work on our broader um, desktop application that allows for multiple units to be monitored at one time. We have also been able to incorporate more than one system uh, into this, this application uh, across this, uh, this home heating area. We've actually even sought out partners uh, that have joined us in this journey, recognizing that we have a platform that they want to be a part of, but we were able to then incorporate more of what's happening in that, that physical plant, that basement where all the heating activity goes on. We're starting to add a lot of partners in there. And as time goes on, you'll see more of that uh, happen with us. So from for our perspective, I'd say that uh, we're making, I guess, a great strides as it relates to the industry. We're near the top um, of, of the, the heat as far as getting things moving down, down the path. What that means is we got a long way to go. We're going to continue to challenge ourselves. We're going to, we're going to continue to get uh, feedback from the industry. And what we are not going to do, um, is, do, do is look back. We're looking forward. That's where we're going. Fantastic. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, very first comments uh, you mentioned, actually, I really like it. Uh, that we need to be in this industry, uh, although we are not there completely today. Um, and I want to give you an example to our audience. Um, look at the story of the Fujifilm. Um, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, Fujifilm was really big in the film industry. And basically, I believe they were the lead and, and they were the leader of the film industry somehow. Um, and they didn't acknowledge of the presence of the digital film and uh, digital photography. And because of that, um, because of that, they didn't develop anything in that area. And look at the Fujifilm today. Do you know where is Fuji today? We <laughs> see all these cameras everywhere, yeah, but um, yeah, I don't know where is Fuji today. So I really like the, uh, I really like your vision actually. You acknowledge that you need to be there. Um, maybe we are not there 100% and honestly, there is no hundred percent in this uh, in this game. Um, um, I want to refer the audience to the um, one of the book I was uh, reading recently from Simon Sinek, um, a finite and um, finite game or infinite game. Uh, basically, is talking uh, not just specifically for this industry, for all the industry. Um, there is no um, end line to this game. Basically, if you're developing something, we have our customers and later on, we learn from this ecosystem and we are developing uh, on top of that. So it's just a continuous game. There is no uh, end, li end line or deadline for this game. And that's great actually, Beckett started this journey and you mentioned um, that uh, we're working with the partners right now to join to this um, great ecosystem of the connectivity. Um, what's your message? What's your message to other people in the HVAC industry? Maybe they're not in the oil industry. Maybe they are in the different part of the uh, industry. Let's say all the bandwidth from the um, testing equipment, from uh, the gas, from the cooling system, uh, from the pump, everything. What's your message to these guys and why they should be part of this great ecosystem? You know, what I say, Amir, and I guess to, to the industry in, in, in general, is that I don't know where to tell you to start. And I actually don't even know how to tell you to start. What I would tell you is that don't let the absence of a certain capability within your organization, maybe that be, hey, I don't know how to get this sensor out to, um, you know, out to the cloud. Those things are being built along the way. Get moving. You use a fantastic example of Fujifilm. There are so many that uh, we can look at with, as regards to brands and, that didn't make the shift, didn't allow themselves and let things get in their way, thinking that what you have today is gonna to get you there tomorrow. Trust me when I tell you that one of the things that we're not doing internally, not only with IoT, with a variety of other technologies, is allowing ourselves to, to rest on where we have been. We cannot afford to do that. And therefore, I would say to you, uh, those of you who are considering filing applications or ways to get in, we necessarily, we didn't have an application. We, we really had to do that to make it work for ourselves. But today, part of what we're able to offer to others in the basement in that physical plant is to join us. And that part's done for you. 
right? So what else are you trying to what, what else are you trying to do to help make yourself more relevant to your customer, to your end user? Take that time, invest the time and funds where possible, and start making those moves. Great, great. Um, that's fantastic. And 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 um, one of the last things I want to ask you, um, regardless of what Beckett is doing today, what is your vision for this industry, uh, specifically for the connectivity part and the IoT, uh, for the next five, ten years? Yeah, so what drove that uh, drive in, in me is, is specifically this. There is a convergence ha ha happening, and I mentioned that earlier. It's a convergence happening with that handheld computer. Uh, and the simple fact is that what you don't want, and what we didn't want, um, and I don't think was would be appropriate for our business, is to turn a blind eye uh, to the innovation that's happening, that at the end of the day, we're, we're all getting to the point where we're much it's much easier to find the answers for what's happening with whatever part, part touches your life. And so therefore, we can't afford to, to let what history has, uh, has shown us historically works for us. We've got to find a way to reach into where the next watershed moment is going. And so that, for me, was the vision. Let us find our way uh, to continued relevance as this market shifts. And it's scary. You can feel it while you're, when you're in the middle of trying to get this stuff done. That, man, are we making the right choice? Are we doing the right stuff? Uh, have we talked to the right people? Do we have the right technology? Is this the right um, uh, end, use, end user that we needed to get a hold of? All those things are, are very real and it's real time. Um, but how long do you feel like you want to see your business really continue to thrive? It's really a question you need to answer yourself. And if so, let's find ourselves moving forward. Great, great. And uh, one of the one of the topics um, and items you mentioned is uh, we need to be adaptive and that basically we need to... Uh, see how the technology goes and basically we use a new technology one of um, because we have some audience technical audience and definitely one of the uh, one of the questions these guys they have is um from the connectivity standpoint um let, let let's say uh, what we have today at the beckett uh, we have a, a system uh, for measuring the fuel tank um today we have a wi-fi based system um, with the presence of the 5G and the cellular connectivity, some people are asking themselves, what is the future of this connectivity? Um, 10 years ago, the cellular for the IoT was a dream um, because of the uh, service fee of the cellular uh, connectivity. Uh, we couldn't afford for all the devices to be uh, cellular based. But today we are talking about less than a buck for connectivity, actually. Today we are talking about the 5G. Everything will be in a cellular. Um, so what is your take on that for the future? Well, so, I mean, I, I, what I would say is you know, some of us can even remember as far back as, as the invention of the fax. We were sending data and we were concerned about baud rates. As far as when we were or weren't going to be able to get some good information today, um, while it may not be necessarily, um, we almost expect that we're going to have almost instant connectivity in almost any place that we are. Certainly within um, within the, the contiguous borders of the, of the U.S. as we're talking about this, but the same holds true across the planet. And I would just say that that the my my thought is that where it is especially with 5G and the opportunity for cellular to take over where we are now and the rates coming down as, as, as low as they are over time. To us, the fact that, that the bandwidth that we were really having to struggle with before is becoming much, much more available. I think we're going to find ourselves you know, with, with greater capabilities much faster that, 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 that growth rates is going to continue to enhance over time. And we're going to find ourselves having more capabilities than we ever thought we were going to get in a way that is um, really helpful to what we're trying to get to get through. Speed is one thing, but the ability to connect free of an encumbrance of even Wi-Fi uh, will be a wonderful thing as well. Okay, yeah, yep, yep, great, great. Um, the discussion we had today, actually, Fred, um, we were mostly working on the marketing side of the uh, marketing side and vision side of the um, IoT for our industry. And honestly, we just touched the surface. Um, definitely, there will be more topics that we need to cover. Um, so I want to ask you, uh, please um, come back to this uh, to this series in the future. And um, later on, once you launch a new products for uh, for uh, for your IoT portfolio, uh, maybe you can go back and talk about those products and how they 
how they uh, they are helping uh, customers and Beckett to deliver the message and uh, add a value to the customers. Well, I would say, Amir, thanks for having me uh, on today. And I certainly am enjoying your platform. One of the things I'll tell you is I do a lot more listening than I do talking. And, and so um, I'll be watching. Uh, certainly more than happy to come back if, if, uh, if the need arises or if, you know, it's, if it's relevant. I, of course, I'd love to share with you with some of the things that we're doing. But from what I can tell the, uh, the, the, the folks that you have that have been along the journey with you, uh, I'm probably going to learn a whole lot along the way, too. So uh, my, my, uh, my great appreciation for, for having me on and the ability to talk a bit about vision and to learn something from you as well. Thank you so much, Brad. Um, and for our audience, um, for the next episode, I'm going to talk about the matter, um, which previously um, known by Chip Group. Um, basically, 2019, uh, Zigbee Alliance, um, um, Amazon, Google, Apple, they came together. And for the connectivity of the smart home, they, they made a deal that they want to have a standard uh, communication protocol. So that's that's really uh, important uh, for our industry as well. So the next episode uh, will be a discussion with one of the leaders um, in this industry, NXP, and I'm going to talk to the head of the marketing at NXP. Um, so for the audience, if you like to watch more episodes related to IoT, I want to ask you to subscribe to this channel and you will get a notification for uh, the videos in the future. Fred, thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Take care, Bye. my friend. Bye.